Uh, my name is Travis Thurston. I'm an instructional designer in the Center for Innovative Design and Instruction uh, over in Academic and Instructional Services. And I get the opportunity to introduce our presenters uh, for this first session. Uh, first, we have uh, Kevin Reeve. He's our Director of Teaching and Learning Technologies in AIS. And we have Tyler Clare, who is our Canvas admin over in uh, Teaching and Learning Technologies. Uh, these guys are the rock stars of educational technology. They are on the cutting edge. They are finding uh, the greatest solutions uh, for you in the classroom. Uh, I love working with them uh, to see what we can use next uh, in teaching. So I'll, I'll turn it over to them. Okay. All right. Well, it's a, um, so just share a little interesting story. When, um, when we kind of first started this endeavor, um, I, I had, had seen a presentation a couple years ago at an EDUCAUSE conference about how um, this uh, instructional technologist in a, in a school from Kansas uh, was using 3D printing uh, and just how revolutionary it was. And, and so it was really cool. I took it back to, to everybody to see if we could actually get a 3D printer. Uh, didn't happen. Um, so fast forward a couple years, uh, Kevin becomes my boss, becomes the new director. We have this new cool department called Teaching and Learning Technologies. Um, he is an amazing person uh, in the maker space. Um, he actually helped make, uh, help uh, start up the Cache Valley Makers Club. Um, so he, he has been in 3D printing quite a bit. And what was really cool is where I was blocked, he just basically just went out and bought the 3D printer. So, and then he just gave it to me and he says, here you go, have fun with it. And so, so this is sort of a culmination of about um, almost a year of, of working on stuff and, and, and uh, just developing some things, getting used to 3D printers uh, and learning a lot too. So um, just, just to kind of get started, uh, what we're going to hit some of the topics. So we're just going to talk basically about how 3D printing in higher education is being used. Um, and we're also going to look at some of the tools that are available for 3D design. And then also we're going to talk a little bit about our efforts in 3D scanning, some of our technology that we have, some of the stuff that we've done. Um, and then we're also going to look at some printing resources that we have on campus. And, uh, and then also just some general things to know about 3D printers. So for the short part, I'm going to hand it over to Kevin, and he's going to talk to us about higher education. All right. Uh, this is this one made headlines. This is Weber State University. They have a. Uh, I want to share with you some things that I've seen. What's going on in higher education across the country, along with some things that are happening right here, at least that I know about. And I'm sure there are a ton of them I don't know about. Okay, um, but this one here, um, we have a business class that's on entrepreneurship and innovation. Right. And so this class actually uses 3D printing. The students actually prototype a product um, that they want, have designed and want, to, and, and want to use it. And they've had quite success, at least from the article. I saw the article, I think, in the Salt Lake Tribune. And then I, they've also uh, put it on their website. So you can search 3D printing at Weber State and read the article about how they're doing it. But uh, this is kind of an interesting approach. When we first started seeing 3D printers, they were primarily, primarily used in, it, in engineering. In fact, the very first 3D printer on this campus was in mechanical engineering over in their shop. And, and it cost $50,000, if I recall. Um, and now those printers, that same printer, much, much better, has at least dropped, I think, down to at least half and maybe quite a bit less. Um, very high-end industrial printer. Um, but anyway, so this is one example. Um, on this campus, uh, some students in the architect pro, uh, program have actually built their own uh, models of homes, okay, that uh, houses and printed them out. I went over to the computer lab that I'll share with you uh, where the, there's some resources for 3D printing on this campus that are available to faculty, staff, and students. Um, but this is one example of how it's being used. Uh, here's another one. Uh, you probably, this, these kind of things get lots of headlines out there across the country, and that's uh, building prosthetics. There are groups that have taken 3D printers to uh, countries in Africa, especially war-torn countries where people have lost limbs, and they've taught uh, people 
how to take these models and modify them to fit individuals. And so this has been a very, very uh, popular use in building uh, prosthetics. So you see lots of students in the medical field and also in um, industrial design and also in engineering doing these, these kind of things. Um, that's blood vessels, right? We're able now to use 3D printers to print tissues and cells and ears and all kinds of things. It's amazing. Now, it doesn't use the same kind of material we have out here as our 3D printer, which is plastic. But in the medical field, they're seeing huge advances. So in re so researchers who are doing anything in, in the biological sciences, there are certain types of, of 3D printers that you can use to print cells. So these are 3D prints of actual blood vessels that, that's going on. Uh, pretty impressive stuff. Uh, whoops, went the wrong way. All right. Uh, senior projects. That's a, that's a big thing that's, uh, that I'm seeing on this campus, at least on this campus. A lot of students, regardless of their, of their major, are, are, are using uh, 3D printing for, for senior projects. And so this can range from, you can see, prototyping a new drill to fashion, merchandising kind of stuff, right? Uh, build, prototyping a shoe. Uh, there's new materials coming out all the time that are even flexible kind of stuff uh, for allowing you to build kind of, you know, squishy, you know, kind of materials as well. Uh, you can see some, a student prototyped a motor, that's the center one. And then drones, I see this all the time. This is a real popular one among engineering students and also hobbyists and enthusiasts is to, to build 3D uh, um, drones and parts, okay? So that's, that's another use. This is actually um, a new, I, I went to the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. I went to find a 3D printer to see what was out there before I made a decision. What I found was probably literally over, nowadays, over a thousand different 3D printers that are on the market. Makes it very, very difficult to choose. Uh, and I'll share in my, the, the latter part of my presentation um, some guidelines if you want to look at buying a desktop 3D printer um, for use, uh, for your own experimental use. And I'll kind of give you some tips on what to do. But um, there was actually a company there uh, came out of a university that had a 3D printer that prints electronic circuit components like resistance and capacitance and inductors. And, and this is an example of, I can't remember what exactly this one was. I found this one doing research for this presentation. But it's a, I think it's a little inductive circuit, almost like a, a little, um, um, the little RFID kind of things that, that's basically an antenna with a chip, all 3D printed. Okay. So um, there's quite a future in this. And I can tell you what I've seen. I, I, I started a makerspace for kids in Cache Valley with a partner of mine. It's been going three years. We've had a 3D printer there for three years. And the tools that Tyler's going to talk about are available. I can tell you what I'm seeing. Kids gravitate to this stuff. Um, any child who walks into our makerspace in Cache Valley, who, regardless of what project they're working on, gravitates to this 3D printer because it's cool and it's up and coming. I took it to a group of girls, had never done 3D printing before in their life, gave them a tool called Tinkercad. And within an hour, they had 3D models ready to print. They were simple, but I watched girls design pianos and chairs, kind of interior design stuff. I watched them um, do cupcakes, 3D models of cupcakes. Um, uh, I've watched uh, guys build cars. I watched a girl build the entire Disney character set of Mickey Mouse and Minnie and then Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, just using this little simple tool called Tinkercad, which is free from Autodesk and makes it very simple for kids. So what we're gonna see Shortly, these printers are getting into high schools. They're getting into middle schools. Um, they're not used a lot yet, and there's some reasons why. But we're going to start seeing students come to our universities and colleges already with experience in 3D printing. So really, the sky's the limit from art to interior design to, uh, to architecture to engineering to computer science to even um, the agriculture, there's ways that 3D printing can be incorporated uh, into, uh, in assignments. For example, you may have an, you know, I've, I've watched a lot of teachers give quite 
quite a bit of flexibility in the way students approach an assignment. You know, instead of doing a typical paper, they allow them to do a, a PowerPoint or a video. I could also see um, uh, easily incorporate allowing students to do a 3D project as something they turn in, right? Could be anything from history to um, music to, I mean, the sky's the limit. You can use your creativity to allow students to be creative and do something like this. Um, anyway, Tyler? Okay, so I'm going to talk to a little bit about some of the tools that, that can be used in design. And so um, the first one was, was Tinkercad. And so this is one that Kevin talked about. This is a very simple browser-based um, system that, you know, uh, just like you said, is used to kind of help, te help people teach and, and help people learn about the 3D design process and, and creating objects. And so um, this is very simple where you just take simple, simple shapes and manipulate them uh, into, into, the, um, into the forms that you want. Uh, you can also do different things where you can import images and uh, what they call extrude them to become 3D objects. And so this is an example of a cookie cutter that I actually created, just a little elephant um, for, for my uh, creative project for my master's degree. Um, so that was actually just brought in just as a flat picture and we were able to turn it into a 3D object. So the next step up. Um, is is one two three D design, and so this is the this is the application that I primarily use. Um, in Tinkercad, because of its uh, the, its strength is its its simplicity, uh, in order to help t help people to understand the design process and get used to navigating around these these programs and getting used to the tool set. And so this this program was actually designed specifically for three D printers. Uh, and, and people that do 3D printing and design objects for 3D printing. Um, and so the makers of these, of these applications, um, Autodesk, the, the developers of this program, they actually got free reign of all their software. So they were able to go look through all their really professional, awesome software that they have for um, computer-aided drafting, for engineering, and they were able to get all these really cool tools and then they took those tools and then simplified the, the method of using those tools. And then they put them all into 123D Design. So you can do some really cool stuff in 123D Design that, you know, in, in Tinkercad, it may take you like 12 steps to do something. But in, in 123D Design, it takes maybe three steps uh, and, and uses a, a specialized tool to help you do that. Um, so. Even the next step further is what's called Fusion 360, and so this is this is like um, this is if you're going to get really serious into into design, and so this has a lot of cool features, uh, including things like a history, so you can go back in time of all the stuff that you've been working on, and, and at any point you can manipulate or change um, that object uh, in the history timeline, and then it will modify that object from. Uh, you know, kind of have a cascading effect. Um, and, and one of the cool things with Fusion 360 is you can actually animate these parts. So if you have a, a you know, if you, if you design one part of a, of a larger part that, you know, moves, you can actually animate that to see how the other parts operate and, uh, and see, you know, if there's issues with it. So, I mean, in this case, we're kind of getting into, into the realm of, like, what, serious engineers and designers would do but this is this is this is also sort of geared towards the, the hobbyist that you know is 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 familiar with some of the some of the finer points of um, working in the software programs uh, and understand the tools uh, and so then they can actually create a lot a lot more complex objects so so now we've kind of talk, talked about the Autodesk stuff. This is this is sort of the stuff that is is generally available. The cool thing with these Autodesk products is that for education, they're free. Um, Fusion 360, you get a you get a um, three year license if you, you if you if you register with your um, uh, with a .edu email address, um, and then uh, One Two Three D Design is free. Um, Tinkercad is also free as well. So these are really cool products that you can sort of get a, get your foot in the door of making stuff. 
um, within for 3D printing. So the next, the this so now we're like leaping way forward. So this is what's called SolidWorks, and so SolidWorks is is the primary application that's taught on campus for engineering students to um, to design parts in in uh, in 3D. So this sort of goes beyond just 3D printing. This this goes to the different manufacturing methods of you know CNC, uh, CNC machines, um, laser cutting, uh, stuff like that. So this is extremely complex. This 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 application can take um, some of the engineering students several semesters to even master. Um, so so but this is primarily what engineering students on campus actually work with and, and learn. And so this isn't this is a very industry standard application. Um, and so that's why. It's, it's taught primarily on campus is that when our students go out, they're ready to hit, hit, the, hit the workforce and have the skills necessary to design these really cool objects. So another one is called Solid Edge. And so um, in, in comparing SolidWorks to Solid Edge, kind of think Toyota Camry versus Nissan Altima. Um, they're pretty similar. They, they do a little bit things different. Um, the main difference is, is this this is actually um, developed by Siemens, and, and they use that exclusively in the, all their manufacturing processes. And so the, the awesome thing about this is there is an engineering professor on campus that is working with the um, Gear Up program in high schools, uh, and then there's a really cool, um, really cool offering that um, the Siemens uh, executives offered him that if, if he teaches this course, they will give uh, they will give the high school students a crack at their certification exam, um, and so basically, he's given all these high school students all the tools that they need to basically take and pass this certification exam that is is very hard to pass, uh, and and usually when you pass it, you are you are a very seasoned engineer, um, but it's awesome because we're getting students right off the bat, right out of high school ready to hit the workforce if needed um, and, and design stuff, you know, in, in 3D. So, um, so, those, are, so those, those are some of the kind of tools that we, that we use and uh, just kind of an overview of, of, uh, of what's out there. So, Kevin? Oh, sorry. I had one more thing. Sorry. Um, our 3D scanning stuff. I forgot about this. Um, so we have a really cool uh, display out in the in the sun um, sunburst lounge, um, and so we have a a, a a workstation called an HP Sprout, and so this was developed by HP to help uh, people do 3D scanning, um, you know, work in 3D. But there's also some really cool implement, implement implications with um, uh, instructor uh, instructor led um, classrooms where this could present a really good replacement for sort of the instructor workstation um, because it gives a, a document camera, um, several different things that you can do. So um, in general, when we do 3D scanning, uh, you, place an, you place an object on a base and uh, using a, uh, um, a series of, of black and white lines, um, it's able to create a 3D model. And so it scans it from different angles and tilts at a different angles, and so you do a couple different scans. You do you, normally. I've I've done about seven scans on different different sides, um, and then that's made a really good 3D model. And so then we're able to take that and then export that to a 3D printer. And so here's an example of of one that we did. So we have a we have a student worker that is from from Togo, and, and so he recently went home and he brought. A bunch of us um, these wooden figurines and so I took that scanned it with a 3d scanner and then printed it off on our 3d printer um, and so these are the type of things that we can do we can replicate objects we can take them to improve upon um, and so this is this is some of the things that we can do with our 3d scanner so this is really cool um, so if you guys want a demonstration of, of how to do it come visit us at the booth and also, I can give a little demonstration of how I can create some objects in 1-2-3-D design as well. So, all right. so now that you've seen all the cool stuff, we'll talk.
practicality <laughs> of all this, okay? Um, all right. Um, we're very fortunate, thanks to the engineering department on campus, that they have purchased two high-end industrial printers and put them in a student computer lab. And they are available for use by faculty, staff, and students to print 3D objects. Now, I know the, uh, the, the desire is to go out and purchase one that you can have and operate yourself, okay? And that's still a good desire, but I'll tell you the, the challenges with that, and I'll show you our recommendation with thousands of them out on the market, what you can do. But these are the two um, printers that they have, and they're, they're replacing um, one of these with a brand new model. And these are not cheap printers. These, these are fifteen to $25,000 a piece. So they are the industrial ones. They're from a company called Stratasys. Um, they're well known in the industry for, for 3D printing. And new technologies and new breakthroughs in this in this field are happening all the time, including um, these are what we call additive printing, right? The best metaphor I've been able to come up in my life has been like cake decorating, okay? And that is additive, right? You've got your frosting or your filament and it's squeezed out and you add one layer at a time. 3D printing can take hours uh, to print. So uh, some of the objects we've printed have taken 12 hours to print. Okay, this isn't like going to the computer lab and printing out your report. Okay? And it can print for anywhere. Some of the small objects we print, we can print out in an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. And we're talking really small. The rest of them, depending on how smooth you want it and how polished you want it, you know, it's just like other things. There's a express mode and there's a detailed mode. We'll take, you know, 24 hours, anywhere from 10 to 24 hours. We're printing one out there now that's a seven hour print and it's a little kind of robot dude about this big, but it's got hinged parts. So it's not, it's not a simple process for printing and things can go wrong. It does take time. So if you're going to incorporate that into a project for students, you have to help them understand they're not going to the computer lab the night before it's due and printing it out. The current, the guys here at this computer ask for four days because what happens is if there's projects and classes, they all kind of hit at the same time, right? All right, so um, there's their address. They are in the Industrial Science Building, and if you want, you can go over there and talk to them. They're very helpful. They have some students that work there that are very knowledgeable, not all the students, and then it's led by a gentleman whose name is Leo that offices over in the main engineering building up in the Dean Suite um, that's very, very knowledgeable about this stuff. And they take, they take good care of you. I've taken some things over um, and asked them to print them, and they take really, really good care of you, and, and they work hard to meet your deadline and also get it done, but they, they get slammed sometimes. So here's the first printer. Um, the basic idea of this printer, and they use different materials uh, for printing as well. And you can go to their website and, um, and find out what the different materials are and what they're best used for. But this one here is best for detailed de designs. And what's cool about this one, they have a rubber-like material. So this stuff starts as liquid and it comes out. So they can print like little tires for little model cars or squishy kind of things with this, this type of material. So it's, it's, it's kind of a, a flexible rubber-like material. They have some polyjet stuff. The Vero family is kind of an opaque material. Um, it's really kind of marble, not really marble-ish looking, but that kind of that color, it's really cool. Um, so this is a really uh, interesting printer. This other one here, this stand-up one, uh, prints with what they call ABS, and that's plastic material. And it works really well, and it's solid, and you know it, it's great for printing and prototyping parts, and doing things like that. Okay, um, mostly used for uh, durability, things that you want that are that you want to last. And there are new materials for these printers coming out all the time as they invent those. All right, all right. Things to know about 3D printing. We talked uh, some of those. The first one is um, it's going to take time. To print. You just can't print it out. I expect some students will start showing up to college with their 3D printer. You can now get a, a printer sub $500. Uh, they come in various um, types, kits, complete from China, from America, from Europe. 
the challenge I found is vetting those. And so my recommendation, if you're going to buy your own 3D printer, is you find a good mentor or somebody who has one, and you buy the same one they have, because then you have somebody to help you get up and going, uh, for sure. Uh, print a small, I tell people, you print a smaller version, right? The nice thing about building it as a vector image in 3D, you can say, you can shrink it down and print out a small version just so you can make sure it's designed right and looks good before you spend 20 hours printing a large one that you go, oh crap, I need to change something. And, and I always say rely on the expertise of the people in that 3D lab. And Tyler and I would be happy to consult with you and uh, help you if you want to incorporate this in your classroom. And, and know how to uh, best approach it, we'd be more than happy to sit down with you if you're looking for a desktop printer, 3D printer, so that you can learn yourself and prototype and, and understand the process for your research work or your professional development work or classroom work. We'd be happy to consult with you and share our knowledge. All right. All right, you want to buy your own 3D printer. Every year, um, Maker Magazine comes out with a uh, annual printer report. It happens October-ish, November-ish time frame, and they take a whole bunch of printers. And I don't know how they're going to do them this year with a, a whole crop of a thousand of them that probably came out at the Consumer Electronics Show. But they put them through a test. They put them in their lab and they test. And these two consistently come out on top. Uh, both of these are at USU in various departments. I've seen these in operation, and both of these get high reviews. Now, there's a couple of others. The thing I like about this Ultimaker 2, and the one we have out there is the Ultimaker 2 Plus. That should have Ultimaker 2 Plus. It just works. Tyler and I hadn't printed for over a month, and we fired it up the other last couple weeks ago to print something, and it just worked, and it did it. I can tell you the very first printer we got at the Makerspace was a $2,500 printer from MakerBot, brand new model, hot off the press. Everybody wanted them. They were back ordered. We got it. Nothing but problems. Just took 30 minutes to get it up to ready to print something. You had to babysit it, and it was just problematic. Basically, they released a product before it was ready, and they paid dearly for that. Um, they fixed a lot of those problems, but when we, Tyler and I, got the Ultimaker, and we did that based on recommendations of other people who had it and loved it and didn't have many problems with it, we've been really impressed with it. We've learned a couple of tweaks for it. Um, and, the, and the key to make it successful, and it just works. This other one, the Lulzbot Taz 6, is a, is a newer model of the Lulz. It's a very good 3D printer. Um, the IDT department has one up that they've been playing with. It just works, and it's considered an open source model for a 3D printer, so people can add to it uh, quite a bit. And, and so if you're looking for a printer, those are two of our recommendations. And if you want our help, if you're going to buy a desktop one, get the Ultimaker, because we know it the best, OK? Um, but anyway, we, it's, a, it's out of what country is it out of? Uh, Netherlands. Netherlands. And so we've been quite impressed. And they have two or three models. They have a smaller one, this one, and then one that's stacked a little higher. All right, uh, three tips for looking, if you're looking for a 3D printer. They pretty much print ABS, which is kind of a plastic, and then PLA. PLA is biodegradable. It's made out of corn. And PLA is what most of the hobbyists use to do it. That's what we print. We can print ABS or PLA or two or three other filaments. We've chosen PLA because ABS kind of has a smell to it when it's heated. It can produce a little bit of toxic fumes. You want a heated bed. You want one that doesn't require proprietary filament. There are some that are headed towards the HP ink cartridge deal, right, where you have to buy HP ink, and you buy it in a cartridge, and it usually means the price is a lot higher, and it has a chip in it to prevent you from refilling it with <coughs> somebody else's brand. I can tell you there's junk filament out there. Um, there's cheap filament that you can buy, and you can put it in, and it clogs up your 3D printer, and it doesn't work real well. Um, the next step is, I already mentioned this, find somebody who owns one and, are, and loves it so you can have a mentor to help you get up and going. Um, one thing we loved about the Ultimaker, we didn't have a mentor, but they had great videos on site and a great help for him. And Tyler is pretty, is really technical, so he figured it out. He spent a lot of hours when we first got it. I don't think he went home for a week and, um, and really mastered it and played with it. And it doesn't lock you into a specific slicing software. You basically create your object in the software, 
and then you put it in some software that slices it and makes it into what they call G-code so that the 3D printer, and there's all kinds of that software out there, both open source and purchased, so it slices your image up so that the 3D printer can actually now do the additive. Okay. All right. That's the presentation. Questions? Tell you want to come up? Yes. So some of the things you passed around have moving parts. Yeah. So you saw the fish, right? That was printed as one. I know. It, 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 so what it does, yeah, it, it's incredible. The first thing I ever printed out on a 3D printer was a locking chain, right? And it kind of connects it a little bit, and you just kind of snap it, and it breaks apart. It's in the design. It's really in the design. It's pretty impressive what you can do. The object we're printing right now, a little robot dude that somebody made, um, you can go out to a, a place called Thingiverse, we got one minute left, and find thousands and thousands of 3D objects that people have created, and many of them you can grab and modify, which is kind of cool, like the little snap together boxes that somebody's already built all the hard parts, and then you can choose the, the size that you want. It's, and then others like the gears, that was four separate parts, two gears and then two levers that were designed and you just snap it together. So you'll see it in both ways. They're doing that now. Big old crane type ones, like you see at the dock, you know those big old cranes that move the big containers at the dock? They have similar ones like that, that they're actually 3D printing houses. Yes, yeah, so they're using, using concrete, and just layer by layer just makes just a wrap of concrete, and so they're building... They've done, I've seen plastics done, yeah. like recyclable plastics. They just throw milk jugs and plastics in and it melts it down and makes a material. And the, it, it, this, this is, we're headed this way, right? Our, uh, our students are going to face careers where there's thousands and thousands of jobs that need this kind of experience, right? This is a future. It isn't the future, but it's a portion of the future. We're going to see it from everything from art to medical. Um, these models that you're showing us, I assume the technology is accelerating and improving. Is it at such a rapid rate that it's becoming almost uh, not very cost effective to, to buy, buy one for personal use and then two or three years down the road it's possibly? Yeah, it's fun to have a 3D printer to learn, right? But if I was going to be printing lots of stuff, you know, I, I tell people, I, I'm taking stuff over to that computer lab to have them print it, right? Just because they can do it, they know what they're doing, they have the high end. We still like to tinker and play and learn with ours, but I recommend people, you know, you go, and there, there's even house, so it's just like you can send postcards off to get printed and get them back in the mail. You can do that with 3D objects as well. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, you can go to uh, Sam's Club and buy a 3D printer, and you can buy filament now at these places. And as they hit the sub 1000 level, you're going to see a lot of them in homes. But the basic plastic printing, that's going to be here for a while. And that's based on XY, you know, CNC technology. It's going to be here forever. All right. We're out of time. And so we'll, we'll, we'll be out at the booth. Stop by. If you've got more questions, want to ask, want to learn more, we'd be happy to help you out. Thank you.